at your end step is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello, and welcome to At Your End Step. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And not Dave. Oh, no. It's very reflexive for me to just say, (laughs) and Dave. Uh, Dave has the night off. (laughs) Um, But uh, we have another uh, fun-filled episode for you uh, you folks this week. Got a few community things to talk about, as well as uh, Magic Arena uh, updates, spellbook, all that jazz, and then uh, jumping into uh, competitive to talk about the GP that happened over the weekend in Phoenix. Uh, and then, uh, of course, our, our typical wrap-up stuff towards the uh, the end of the show. But uh, let's just get started. So, first and foremost, we uh, got some more uh, information about the spellbook cards, uh, the the Jace spellbook to uh, to to be specific. Obviously, that uh, Wizards has announced to replace the uh, from the Vault series, which is is a good thing you know oh, we, we commented before that for, from the vaults really uh, you know run run its course and um uh, having a uh, something else slot into that makes sense and uh this product's going to be twenty dollars and um obviously very focused on jace uh unfortunately they did pick the wrong jace to <laughs> to put in the uh the, the product here um uh it's, it's jace that obviously makes sense it's jace bellern um being you know the the first jace uh, it, it, it does make sense that it shows up here and, uh, it's just not, it's just not the best Jace. It's certainly not the right Jace for like the climate, but Hey, what do I know? Yeah. You know, who, who am I to judge? Um, I, I don't know. This is like Disney reaching back into the vault and pulling out like Lady in the Tramp 2. <laughs> uh, like we could, we could, we could have had a real one, <laughs> <laughs> but, but instead here we are. Um, and um, the spells that go along with uh, the Jace here is Blue Elemental Blast, Brainstorm, Counterspell, Gifts Ungiven, uh, Mystical uh, yeah, mystical Tutor, uh, Negate, and Threads of Disloyalty. Uh, so these are, you know, they all have, all, all of them have Jace-related art, of course, as you would, you know, come to expect. And um, I, I think, I, I, for the most part, I think all the art's pretty cool. Nope. Um, nope. I think that... I don't know. I, I don't dislike. I don't actively like hate any of the art that's on there. Uh, Gibson given is terrible. Uh, but he wants to give you uh, like a map or a, a ruby. Okay, but that looks like Gideon with a with Jace's cloak on. <laughs> Maybe that's the gift. <laughs> I I don't know. I guess I, it just looks like Jace to me. I don't, I don't I, know. I, I mean, we we've all seen that Jace isn't just like you know some some weak fool or anything like that. You know, he's buff. He he's he's like he he shed some of his cloak and got to show off his muscles. I'm just saying. Oh, is I, it just like his his jawline is too defined? Yeah, for it's you? super. It's a super like mm, okay. Brad Jace. I mean, uh, <laughs> J- Jace Pitt. I shoot. Um, I I don't know. I, I this is this seems fine. Uh, I don't like the way this looks. Uh, but now, based on what I've seen today, I'm definitely in the minority. So and I'm not like upset that this exists, but I I do like like the inverted text, and I think this looks like. I don't know, it's for little kids. I I mean, y- you could say that about a lot of things in, in reference to, to magic. I don't know. I like uh, this it says is, 13 and up on the box. I'm just saying. <laughs> at 13, you're still a little kid at 13. I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, but I, I think that this is a good spot for them to do sort of these uh, divergent things with frames. If you haven't seen the frames yet, they are they're blue, but they are more like the, what, a uh, future site? Uh, I not guess. future site frames, but like the, um, like w- the groundbreaker. If you remember that card, what says that from? Uh, it's from. Um, it's from future site block. Plane I don't know. Shift is it? Plane, yeah, Pla- yeah, sh- planar yeah, chaos. Yeah, I think it's plane shift because it's the sh- the color shifted cards. No, it's planar chaos, and they're plane shifted. Yeah, they're time shifted cards <laughs> because they're they're what if what if they had done something else? Planar uh, plane shift is its own other set. Planar <laughs> chaos. So. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. The coloring's a, it's a little bit off, um, and then it has some like, um, like I said, like it, the colors are inverted. So if you haven't looked at this yet, like the text is white, and so are the box lines. And then at the bottom, there are some like Jace symbols at the bottom. Yeah, and they're like his. Uh, uh, look like his uh, his sweet tattoos, um, is what. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed to sort of represent down there at the uh, the Al- bottom. Alamoret or whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah. 
his tattoo artist. His, you know. Well, no, the, sp- the Sphinx, yeah, man. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> She's um, tattoo artist. <laughs> but uh, I, I think, like, this is, you know, this is where they could they can go to sort of, sort of like, push different looking frames or like if this was how like the entire set looks like obviously that would be you know very jarring um but this is a way that they can make a card look different and it not have to be like a masterpiece and not have to be like super rare um and also not have to disrupt a actual like expert level release or anything like that i sure again i have no issues with this existing it just i I think that it looks it looks janky i really think it does it looks like like oh okay i get it like i I don't know um do you think it looks too much i like them trying too hard to look like special edition pokemon cards yeah it it looks like another card game it looks like another card game is what it does like it doesn't look like magic so i wouldn't say it looks completely like different like another card game completely i know no i guess that as jarring as like even like the invocations were i I don't know it just certainly doesn't appeal to me i think i think the any of the art that was newly commissioned for this i think for the most part it's it's pretty bad i think the negate looks bad i think the gifts and given looks bad i think the brainstorm looks bad but um the brainstorm is literally the exact same like we've been making these jokes about art direction with our, our buddy uh keller who's been on the show a couple times about how like the ponder art where it has three orbs and literally it's Jace with three glowing orbs, and then it says, I have a plan. Actually, I have three, but then I'm going to put back two. <laughs> well, two are just bad. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly. Don't worry, though. Gonna, I have, I'm have. i going to go to the Misty Rainforest <laughs> to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, He's going to shuffle those plans away. <laughs> um, also, why is this cool <laughs> Elemental Blast? Like we we have why is it, it in the Hydro Blast? Yeah, it's in M25 already, Blue Elemental Blast is. Like, why isn't a Hydro Blast? Um... That I I shrug my shoulders because I I don't know that's that's a very good argument. Uh, it's sh- it's so like you know when they do the Chandra one they can print red elemental blast. And- uh, whoa, we did it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, I think like uh the weird other weird thing about this product is like you get one random foil from the the cards that are contained in it. Uh, which is super weird. Uh, making foils for the set if that's something you want very chase because you only get one so. Uh, I know that speaking of Keller, that he was kind of uh, <laughs> kind of disappointed about uh, that fact. Um, but I, I, you know, what? I think it's cool. Um, essentially, I know that uh, it might not be, might not you know care for it, but um, I, I think it's cool that they're pushing like the frame in different directions. And I mean, you could even see it like if you look at the Jace Planeswalker card, like even the, the loyalty uh, you know counter. Um, the starting thing looks a little bit different. Like it just looks looks a little bit different, and that that's refreshing. And um, could you make an argument that it's like just different for different sake? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. For it's like different for I. We still needed to release this product, and let's make it a chase thing so people will open a chase. Yeah. Jace. Oh. I mean, I'm just like I'm okay with like it being the fact that they're not just all foil, uh, which means that you know the cards will more than likely be uh, usable. <laughs> Instead of curling. Um, and hey, you don't have any, you know, dried arbor issues in here. You at least know what the card is and does. <laughs> it's not masquerading as a as a forest. I guess that's fair. <laughs> um, but the uh, other big thing that actually happened today, and uh, it's something that, that has been coming down the pipeline, is uh, MTG Arena is going to be um, making some shifts and changes with the uh, closed beta phase. So this is where they're shifting into their second phase. Um, or their next phase, I shouldn't necessarily say second, but, um, they're going to be sending out more invites. So they're going to be inviting a hundred thousand more players to the beta. Uh, they're going to be new starting collections, uh, which consist of 10 pre-constructed decks and then Amaket block. So Amaket block is going to be coming in, uh, to the format. So you will have, uh, Ixalan block and Amaket block, uh, playable, uh, on the platform. And the other big thing is the NDA uh, is going to be uh, lifting from the product on the 22nd, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, that it will allow people to actually stream uh, uh, the the beta. Yeah. Uh, which I know a lot of people have uh, been honestly wanting uh, because it, this is sort of Magic's future for... Uh, better or worse, uh, depending on your your opinions of it. And um, I know that streaming it is is huge. People uh, you know want to see this this new 
uh, client that don't have access to the beta and they want to see how it functions and operates and um, kind of get on board with it and see like how viable it is to harbor, uh, you know, start developing a an online community around it. So very exciting times for uh, for beta and um, we'll have definitely more, uh, you know, stuff to talk about it uh, later on, probably, you know, maybe even next next week's episode. So it's the 22nd, right? The NDA goes up. I think so. I'll have thoughts on Arena next week. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, some one thing I do think that is is cool is having the pre-constru- pre-constructed decks loaded in. Uh, they, they have the, the deck lists. They're not necessarily very powerful. You actually are working with a, a smaller card pool than uh, standard. <laughs> um which is you know kind of uh interesting and you can only like do so much but um it is uh it's interesting to like have this weird arena third like format that you get to like play in um and uh, i'm glad that we have you know some uh expansion going on with the sets that are actually legal in it not legal in it but available in it so uh but yeah we'll, we'll talk more about it next week for sure and then lastly, and potentially uh, the most exciting thing is that we had a Dominaria story snippet that, that came out. And um, obviously it's kind of a big deal with how they're doing the Dominaria story this week. Not this week, but th- this is set they actually hired uh, an external uh, writer to compose. And I'm going to find the writer's name here real quick. Martha, Martha Wells. Wells. There you go. Uh, Martha Wells um, to construct the story um uh for dominaria and then um today it's uh the beat comics culture uh so comicsbeat.com actually had a exclusive story preview uh that you can actually go ahead and and read right now and mike and i've actually both uh both read it It it's pretty interesting you know it it, no no spoilers or anything like that but it, it it you know talks about the the cabal which we already know are are back and um yeah, it, may, it might have some some callbacks to some some. You you might be reading it, and be like, "Oh, I know those words." A really, really, really sweet sword might make an appearance. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool, and I, I know that uh, Mike, you are are definitely someone who's interested in the story, and I am to a, a lesser extent. I, I like the TLDR versions of, of the story. <laughs> um, but uh, are you? Are what, what's your take on them? Um, hiring this um, uh, author to kind of compose the story. Do you think like, I I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, You know, magic is such a weird fantasy property to me because they've never done more than the card game. Right. Like you have comics. Um, Yeah. And 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 yeah, that's it. The, the 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 older books where they well, so like in the, in the older books right but i mean what i mean beyond that though is you don't have like we have this mythical movie that might exist so, uh, someday and no tv show or anything like that I and mean, we're literally living in an age of the like the huge like television fantasy lord of the rings just got i, I, I think i think i heard that like the lord of the rings amazon show is gonna have like a hundred million dollar like budget or something crazy like in mm-hmm. game of thrones and those sorts of things so magic being sort of relegated to its cards and then just like books is always seems sort of odd to me, and one of the things that bigger f- franchises do is once you have once you have a sandbox, essentially, like the the multiverse is a sandbox. You know, you, right. they they already treat it like that, where they can just like make a plane that has a certain theme and go to it. Um, then it makes sense to let other other authors play in the sandbox. You know what I mean? To like, hey, come bring someone who has a different voice. Now, I still think that even with that different voice, you're going to have a pretty tight control over that. Like, Jace is still going to be Jace, yeah, no matter who's writing for Jace. But at the same time, like, I think that getting someone away from, you know, from Watsi's internal, you know, like, uh, Buyer, for example, who's done it for a long time, like, I think that sometimes they get sort of stuck in narrative loops, and I think they get stuck with what the sets are doing, and I think it'll be nice to have outside forces who, like, might question them. Okay, like, why is this happening? How is this working? Why is this happening? I want to do this. And I'm excited to see where it might push the storytelling. And the little snippet that I read... Not gonna lie, it feels more literary than a lot of the things I've read uh, that have been the novellas so far. Now, for a lot of people, like that won't matter, right? Like, fiction is fiction for that reason. But I do think yeah. that having a and I'm not, I'm not when I say this, I'm not saying that anyone who already wrote wasn't, but having that sort of like uh, experienced professional like edge might 
might come off really well for them. So, and, and again, it's also just good buzz. Like people who may not know magic but know Martha Wells, for example, are might like, hey, I'm gonna go read this stuff and maybe that'll get them. And you know, if she's just the first, which is already a great pick, then who knows who else you might get to do this? Because that's what if you I, I compare this to things like. Um, you can you can compare it to something like a Star Trek where it gets like high profile directors or writers for an episode, yeah, or even like old um like like Twilight Zone style things where they would just you know big they would get big sci fi writers scripts and they would do that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the name can actually help with you know, with notoriety. So I like it overall. I really do. Awesome. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the the same way. It reminds me of how people are excited about who's going to be like directing the next Star Wars. Yeah, absolutely. Same, same, yeah, same you play in the thing. sandbox. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So. That's the last community topic that we wanted to talk and about. And hopefully you'll have read this by the time we come back next week, the actual full story, since it'll be out by the time this episode's out. Yeah, we actually get a double drop, because we get a oh, story. Oh, do we? We got I, Operation Double Drop? I think we get, <laughs> I think we get a story tomorrow and a story um, on Thursday as well. Nice. I believe so. That's, I didn't so realize that. I, I believe that tomorrow is when official spoilers Yeah, start, we, get, right? we get official Dominary stuff tomorrow. Cool, cool, cool. I'm, I'm excited to see some of that art. Um, I, I really, I, I, I'm assuming we're going to see the legendary frame too. So yeah, that's, hopefully that's by true. next week we'll have that to talk about. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <And I> can, <laughs> Turning the next week's episode is going to be great. And I can hate it as much as I hate the Jason oh, Rose well book. So I can't wait. I can't wait till the wizards did something to make you angry. I, it's just going to have a tap out, like, <laughs> like a hologram yeah. across the text box. It's going to say Jace doesn't tap out. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. So before we jump into our competitive segment, definitely want to give a shout out to Comic Town, uh, one of our lovely sponsors. Uh, be sure to check out them out, check them out on Facebook. Just do a quick search for Comic Town Gaming Center on there. Uh, and they also have worldofcomictown.com as their website, so definitely check them out on there. So, GP Phoenix. Uh, it was modern, and uh, it was... Looks like it was a lot of fun at the very least. I wasn't in attendance. Uh, no, unfortunately. Uh, it's. Uh, it feels like it's been a while since I've been to actually a large Magic tournament, and uh, it's it makes me a little sad. Like we have GP Cincinnati, uh, not GP, but we have SCG, the uh, SCG Open in Cincinnati this weekend. Can't go to it. I don't have a team. <laughs> like now, to be you could have gotten a team to go. You could have worked on that. I could have. I can't go. I have to. I have to work on Saturday. Uh, so could have, but uh, I don't really. You know like as many people as <laughs> and like I'm, I'm let's be real i'm dead weight to most teams anyway. Oh, i can't do it. that to people anyway um most of the teams are dead weight how about that i said it <laughs> i said it all right um but uh i don't know how many we had in uh, attendance for the uh, the gp unfortunately i was looking at the deck list let me take a look if they said it but we're very prepared we did look at the site and we linked and everything <laughs> yeah uh you know but anyway uh i yeah. don't see a number well, thanks. But um, definitely know that, uh, obviously, uh, I'm sure this was a very large event. A lot of people come out to uh, to want to play uh, Modern. And um, it was won uh, by Steve Locke. Stephen Locke. Uh, playing Humans. So Five Color Humans was the uh, the, the winning deck list for, uh, for this week. And um, it looks like he had a, a fairly, you know... Uh, standard list, a little bit of deviations here and there. Um, he was playing uh, a Dark Confidant, which we, you see sometimes and you don't see sometimes, uh, as well as a main deck Dire Fleet Daredevil uh, and a main deck Mirren Crusader. Um, so those are kind of the differences. Where everything else kind of shakes out. Um, we, we don't see any like uh, P and Kier and Alar uh, that we saw uh, Rossum's crew uh, uh, play. Um, instead, we, we still see... Um, Things like, um, uh, we don't, we, uh, we actually, we don't see any, the, the spice really is going to be the, the Dire for the Devil Devil and the, uh, Mirror Crusader because we don't see Kessick Malcontents in here either. It's not to go back, uh, 1334. There's, yeah, so yeah, what the, yeah, that's a lot of people. Uh, it, it says 1335, but the last person's name is Remove Me, Remove Me. So I don't think that's an actual <laughs> I, tournament player. Yeah, I don't think they, I don't think, they, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mr. Remove Me played. <laughs> um, uh, it's like Mario, Mario, <laughs> Luigi, Mario. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, this is a, a deck that I think a lot of people ha that think that took a big hit with you know sort of the end bannings with the increased popularity with Supreme Verdict decks and you know Jun decks or just removal decks. But uh, it, it kind of you know shows that uh, you know, this this deck is still viable even in a modern that might be less friendly to it than it once was. Um, and you you see that. 
you know, last week we had Storm kind of show up in force, and if that's going to show up in force, then humans does get, you know, slightly bit better, a little bit better, um, just for the sheer fact that, you know, Meddling Mage is a very powerful magic card. <laughs> I mean, you have Meddling Mage, you have Freebooter, and you have Thalia, which is probably even better than the others. And, oh, yeah, for sure. And not just that, like, um, you know, we've, we literally have the uh, the modern Super League on right now, and, you're, and uh, watched... Uh, we did an interview with Matt Nass talking about the other deck we're going to talk about, the Ironworks deck, and he mentioned that Death Shadow was a was a good it was a bad matchup for it, which is why he was playing the deck because it's kind of gone away because it presents disruption with a really fast clock. Yeah. Well, Humans is that deck disruption with a blisteringly fast clock. So I, I yeah. think that it makes total sense. And um, the uh, deck that um, it faced in the finals was John, if I'm not mistaken, piloted by. Uh, Pearson Laughlin, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it looks right. Um, I, and, uh, <laughs> Mr. Laughlin kind of knew, kind of, uh, found out what the price of, uh, Dark Confidant was. It was it, the price of greatness. It, yeah, the, the, price, the price of greatness. Uh, it was unfortunately his life when, uh, in the finals, in the last game of the finals, he was at, uh, it would say three off of Scavenging Ooze and, um, had a dark confidant out, and fortunately, uh, flipped a blood braid elf, uh, <laughs> which is four. So, hey, that's how you live the junk life, man. That, that's true. <laughs> live by the sword, die by the sword. <laughs> but, uh, but that was that was definitely how this uh, tournament ended. We also had a, a, a kind of an, a, another weird dark confidant uh, thing that that occurred uh, during the tournament. Uh, it was uh, Matt Ness's uh, opponent. I, it, w- it was, I believe, I don't know if this was in the final. So I don't know if it was Laughlin or not. Uh, but he uh, he was playing against Jun, and um, his opponent was at two and f- flipped a one uh, cost card from Doc Confidant, which allowed him to uh, win uh, win the game. So <laughs> it was pretty wild. It might have been. I can actually probably check and see if it was in the finals they played against each other. So, but uh, yeah, it was a, a tournament of you exciting. Mean, do you mean the semifinals? Yeah, yeah, it might have been because I, I there's another John in the top eight. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, that, that's kind of a, another storyline with this tournament. We had eight different decks in the top eight. Yeah, and some some interesting ones we haven't seen in a while. Um, but I think the next deck that we definitely have to talk about, obviously, is uh, Mr. Uh, Matthew Nass's uh, deck. Uh, this is a deck that Samuel Party was also playing. But it's Ironworks combo. And we, we saw this at the Pro Tour uh, a little bit uh, from Shaheen Sarani, notable controlsman. Uh, and um, this this deck is uh, basically you are, you know, using Scrap Trawler, Beer Retriever, and uh, Crack... Uh, Kark Clan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kark Clan Ironworks. Kark Clan Ironworks to uh, basically sack a bunch of stuff, get back a bunch of stuff, uh, get a bunch of mana, and eventually win either by casting Emrakul the Aeon's Torn or uh, shooting your opponent a bunch of times with Pirate Spell Bomb. Now, if that sounds exciting to you, I, I. I don't get it, but uh, <laughs> it is something that you can, you know, definitely do with, within this format. Um, I know that Dave said that this felt a lot like Eggs, which is also a uh, an older uh, modern deck that was fairly uninteractive and had to go through a lot of loops to eventually kill you. Um, and this is kind of the same feeling. Uh, you have uh, Trarion and um, uh, Chromatic Star. Uh, and yeah, chromatic star, which are the main ones that uh, you you do play sphere, but sphere is not as as good because you need to actually like pay a mana to, to tap and sacrifice. But star is just you know when it goes to the graveyard, draw a card. So uh, that's that's kind of using those. That's how you uh, generate mana as well as drawing cards. Um, so. Uh, it's a it's certainly an interesting uh, deck. It definitely is putting another nail in Agent Sturgis' coffin. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with Lantern and possibly uh, Opal, yeah, I mean, po- possibly Opal because you have you know Lantern uh, Affinity uh, in this deck playing Opal, and then for Stirrings you have Tron and Lantern playing you know playing that card. So uh, we, we can really see how these uh, heavy colorless uh, base decks can really take advantage of the, the opal and stirrings in different ways than we might think that they normally would be doing. Um, and allows them to have an incredible level of consistency uh, with the actual, you know, combo, which is, is, is pretty scary. Uh, now I, I do think that this deck is a, is a bit more um, hateable 
uh, in the sheer fact that it does need a graveyard to go off. So things like Leyline of the Void, Rest in Peace, definitely disrupt this this deck's ability to to function. And I th- I think a lot of people were just going light on, on those sort of cards. I mean, also like Stony Silence. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so Stony Silence is a, is another big one, and I think people are just cheating on those because they need to have you know other slots. They, yeah. Period. Yeah. So um, obviously, like this is a deck that is you know it is more of a, a deal now. Now that people kind of know that it exists and know how consistent it is. I wouldn't say this is an easy deck to pilot, though. And um, it's definitely something where there are... There, there are so many triggers. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's definitely something you have to you know stay on top of, make sure that you're not missing anything so that you can you know win the game with your deck. So while it, it is something that you know can be played, um, I think that you could probably take advantage of a lot of people trying to pick up this deck and not being able to... Uh, not be able to you know properly play with it. Um, also, I I wouldn't ever want to play the deck just for the sheer fact that whew, I would I would have people call me on time. <laughs> they, they would call me for slow play because I wouldn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> but so anyway, um, cool, interesting deck. I'm not gonna say cool deck. Interesting deck. No, miserable to sit across from if Correct. you don't have the interaction. It, it is, yeah, just go if you want. Just go look at modern eggs watch the pro tour that uh i think had kibler in it and literally f6 against uh <laughs> sifka yeah, yeah that's who it was yeah. uh literally just made an f6 sign and, and you know pressed it against uh sifka because he had to go to the bathroom or something like that yeah. i don't know anyway <laughs> uh go watch that clip from from twitch if you want to know what the misery of, of eggs was like so uh let's take a look now at nightfall <laughs> Yeah, um, Bant, Bant Nightfall. Because this is actually, I think, a pretty cool... And I, again, like, I don't always follow exactly how these lists look, but this seems pretty interesting to me because this just has a bunch of combos jammed together. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a goober, if you will. A little, a little bit of goober. And, um, um, <laughs> so we know, we've know we talked before about the Retreat to Coral Helm, uh, Night of the Reliquary combo. The, you know, that's the sort of the, the Nightfall is the, the name of the deck. Right. But this version is also running three Vizier Remedies, uh, four Devoted Druid, and the Walking Ballista slash... Um, Dustwatch Recruiter combo. So it's also running that combo. And it has Jace just to kind of glue it all <laughs> just together. Just because, like, why not? Um, I think it's actually kind of sweet, though, because I think you pressure your opponents pretty pretty uh, specifically if you are, you know, if you're threatening two different combos. They, you know, they have to board for, for both. Now, granted, they're both creature-based, so, like, there are ways to just deal with creatures. Yeah, um, there's a bit of overlap. But you have, you know, you're just a core deck that also has Jace, and you just, I, I think that, you know, it's the kind of deck that feels, like, I think it feels frustrating to play against sometimes, because, like, you think you have them one way, and then they're just like, oh, no, I did this. Yeah. And, and I think the Jace, it's only two in the main, uh, but I think that, or in total, I should say, but I think that Jace does a lot of work in these decks, especially where you have, like, awkward cord targets in your hand, like your one-ofs that you want back in the deck. Yeah. You can put them back in the deck. Um, I, I, th- I think, I don't know, I, I really like this version of the deck, and I think also when you look at the sideboard, we just talked about, um, you know, needing strange sideboard play, or your cards for these things. You know, decks like this get to play, like, Kataki, just in the sideboard, yeah. and they get to see it a lot more consistently than other decks would. And, you know, I, I think being able to have some cards that are just good like that, plus it plays things like Unified Will, which is probably pretty good. So, I, I really like the, the build of this deck, and I think that, you know, as people keep trying out, you know, Jace and a couple different things, like, one... Playing Jace on turn three is going to consistently be a good way to make your Jace better. But two, also just playing a bunch of derpy creatures to block it, to block for Jace, to go way to protect it for the long game. So um, I like what this deck's doing. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I, I think people are figuring out that uh, while, you know, Jace can be good in the, you know, sort of slower control decks, um, Jace just existing in um, in this sort of, you know, creature-based mid-range deck coming down on turn three and, and being able to defend it effectively is very threatening. And, um, you, that, that, that's kind of what you want. You want, um, to, uh, be able to protect him. And most, I mean, like a lot of people, uh, you know, think about it this way, you know, if you're playing creatures, a lot of people are going to waste their bolts, like trying to kill your birds or something like that. So you might be able to actually, you know, 
um, get a Jace down and them not not be able to immediately answer it, not only through like combat with creatures, but through you know spells as well. Right. And then you know you can rope a dope them, you can get them to focus on Jason, and then just kill them out of nowhere. Right. So yeah, I, I think like this is uh, a deck that has consistently shown up and, and shown that it is a, you know, a powerful threat within the modern format. Yeah. Um, Jund's here as well, uh, uh, as we as we spoke of, and um, it's. It's Jund. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what else I can really uh, tell you about it. Uh, in all honesty, this is your yeah, typical typical Jund showing. I would I would have to say, uh, but everybody else is a good magic card, and um, it, this isn't the first time that, that it shows up uh, either, because we also have it showing up in Red Green Eldrazi. Uh, so this is you know still kind of a, a new kid on the block. Uh, Blood Red Elf kind of bre- breathed some some life into it and um it it is you know kind of a a aggressive slanted um eldrazi list that gets to play bright Blade, Blade elf into some pretty awesome targets and you know really kind of kind of get there with a, a bunch of just hasty threats and this is also another ancient stirrings deck as well um, obviously you have a lot of hits from your your colorless creatures as well as you're you're playing you know two mind stones as well as well and all your lands um but uh, I know that Dave is actually kind of really interested in this this list as well. Yeah, I think so. I think he's uh, intent on, on building it, and um, yeah, it plays Kessig Wolfron, and I can't <laughs> I can't fault a deck no. for for playing Kessig Wolfron. No. That's uh, that card's near and dear to my heart. Uh, but I I mean I like this deck. It's aggressive. It has a lot of hard to deal with threats. You get a lot of value for Blood Raid Elf, and um, I mean there's not it, it is uh, sort of the the in between of like an Eldrazi and Taxes list and a. Uh, Eldrazi Tron list. Yeah. Like, uh, if you remember Black White, Eldrazi was another, um, uh, another sort of, uh, uh, flavor of, uh, Eldrazi that this kind of sort of reminds me of. So, pretty cool. Um, and, um, if you're looking for a, a deck that's a little bit off the, the beaten path, uh, definitely, uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, the, I want to mention also Bring the Light Scapeshift, which is a deck we also haven't seen in forever. This is in fifth place by, uh, Sung Jin on, yeah. I I, tr- I tried it for your sake. There. Th- this is a, I, think, I appreciate that. Uh, this is another deck that benefits from Jace. Like Jace being in the format, um, definitely you know helps this list out. It's it's different. It's different than what the Jaces in the you know um, the Nightfall deck are doing. Um, this is more of a uh, a control bend, obviously, uh, to this. But you're still you know playing a combo. You're still like that's what you're trying to do. And um, uh, I I think that a lot of people had a feeling that this, this is this kind of list was going to get a uh, shot in the arm with Jace becoming unbanned because this is the kind of card that like this and Amulet Titan Jace is the kind of card that they want to play they want to play this mid range planeswalker that they can potentially get down a turn early as well and helps them put things back shift through their deck see more things and um, uh, be able to be a a threat that people have to um, focus on. I want to take a look at the sideboard here too, because like there's a cool thing here by playing uh, Bring to Light, uh, you get access to the Madcap Experiment uh, sideboard plan, but you only have to bring in one Madcap Experiment, one Platinum Imperium, right. because then your Bring to Light counts as um, your other, you know, your other four essentially. Yeah. And then they also have some cool like, you know, uh, Shatterstorm is a one of Obstinate Bailoffs is a couple, Glenelendra Archmage, like you can get that off of your Bring to Light. So. Yeah. Another deck that benefits from the toolbox element. Right. And, and, you know, this is kind of a deck that, you know, brainstorming with in this deck is probably pretty powerful because you have so many extra shuffle effects. Right. Um, you know, not, it's not just your fetch lands that you're depending on. It's your it's your Steve's. It's your secure tribe elders. It's, you know, your search for tomorrow's and everything like that. So um, it, 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 it's pretty good. It's your bring delights even <laughs> realistically. And it's so. definitely true. Um, and another uh, card that this deck has access to is search for Escanta. Right. You know um, that uh, uh, any deck that has search just allows it to have better filtering and then able to, uh, in the later game, once this flipped, grab, grab that card, you know, you, you need if it's within the, the top, what seven or f- I think it's seven. Yes. I don't play with that card. It's blue. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think like... Um, Wait, are you saying what... The, I'm sorry, the Escanta activation? Yeah. Sorry, four. Top four. It's seven yeah, to flip. My seven apologies. To flip, yeah. seven to flip. Top four. Uh, top four cards. Um, but 
it, it's cool to see like this this used to be like the the popular version of scape shift was the the five color uh or the 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 blue the the team or scape shift and then like red green just took over uh due to consistency and um it, it's cool to see it back it, it got some new cards and uh, it really feels like is uh it's you know competing for for space within the, the modern format absolutely uh it also is playing uh hunting wilds <laughs> Which is, uh, uh, unless it's a, a mishap, it's not a card that I've uh, seen before. Uh, uh, it was in a little bit of play, but yeah, it's just another, it's a way for uh, the, to turn your um, bring, del- uh, or bring Delight 2 into two forests. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what it does. And then, you know, if you just run out of things, you could just make your land some beasts. Yeah, <laughs> it's a random way to kill. Yeah. Um, we also have Tron. Uh, this is Mono Green Tron. Uh, you know, showing up, you know, and this is uh oh man, did you see what card that uh, they're playing in the? In no, I didn't slot? even click on the troll. Oh list. man, you but you'll be happy. Oh man, it's Evercool. Yep, and so what? Where are they playing in their lands, though? I'm sorry, the lands. I was like, I'm sorry, I just looked at. It and, oh man, Guy Reed stands here. <laughs> yes, they are. No, no, you can't. You can't get me with cheap tricks. <laughs> so but uh, I like it. I do like that card. I, I like this card too a lot, um, as well, uh, because. Uh, having played Tron uh, for you know multiple times, uh, having a land that just allows you to find things you need uh, while also like feeding your Emrakul, uh, which is it, it's fine. Uh, I don't think that's the primary like reason that you're you're doing this. You're just really trying to find threats, and, and most of the time, like anything threat wise that you draw is going to be better than whatever you're putting in your opponent's hand. Well, and I think it's important, like because the argument could be made that you could play like Mikakoro instead, right? Yeah, but like you want them to discard. You, you don't want you want to put them up. Like, yeah, look at selection, but you don't want them to get card advantage. Out right. Of it. So you, you're just going to be discarding your extra. Like, yeah, you, you have so much air. Um, and now uh, I think that would be really cool uh, with this version. He's not playing it in his sideboard, but Life of the Loam slash, yeah. uh, slash, you know, a uh, crucible. But like Life of the Loam is, is a really cool thing. Just for the sheer fact that you could, you know, in the sideboard games, if you have it, you could just draw and discard it and like not right. feel bad. So, uh, but I think like that could be a cool addition you may want to look into if you do play this deck and you have, you're playing against a more, uh, land destruction heavy, uh, meta game right. where you are locally. So, uh, but it's just drawn doing drawn things, man. That's, <laughs> that, that's what this is. Um, uh, I, I like I like some little innovation though. I like the guy Reef Sanitarium a lot actually. So, um, and then moving on, we have the other side of the spectrum, which is uh, green taxes. So uh, <laughs> this is white and green uh, taxes, and um, we're, we're seeing the green for obviously a lot of hate bearish type creatures. You know, we have uh, Voice of Resurgence. You have your Man Acceleration actually in, in Noble Hierarch, which is pretty good. Um, uh, you kitchen Fix scoozes. <laughs> yeah, scoozes. Uh, kitchen Fix is technically green, but you know whatever. Um, uh, and um, you you get to play a, a full play set of uh, Horizon Canopies as well. Yeah, but you see what the you know what the the main reason to play this deck this weekend is right. Uh, you look at all those Mirror Crusaders. Oh yeah! Oh my gosh! Hey, there's a lot of Jund, uh, a lot of Jund floating around. Yeah, and uh, you you say, well, they have Lightning Bolt. Well, it's okay because you have four copies of Flicker Wisp and four copies of Restoration Angel. So for their one removal spell right. that can deal with it, you can Flicker it, and otherwise, it attacks for every creature they have. It is a yep. life total slash Liliana slaughtering machine, and I think that's um, that had to be a pretty good draw for this weekend is to bring the old Crusader yeah. out. No, no, for sure. Um, uh, obviously, we even saw that you know uh, humans playing a, a main deck one, right? Um, and that's that's sort of a a deck that can't necessarily always take advantage of being able to protect it as as easily, um, but. It, it's a it's a heck of a card, um, and with the the way that the metagame shifted. It could definitely do some uh, do some work. Man, he's got a really spicy sideboard card down here too. It, is it the uh, Mark of Asylum? Mark of Asylum. Yeah, I've actively never read this card before in my entire life. It didn't play during this this set. Uh, Mark of Asylum is an enchantment. It's a white uh, white and a generic. Uh, it says prevent all non combat damage we dealt to creatures you control. Ooh. Hey, uh, you know what's non combat damage? Um, Anger of the Gods, Pyroplasm. Oh, yeah. Also, is it Staticaster? Oh, very, very true. So, whew, that's um, some spice. Yeah, that that is a, definitely a uh, a, you know, a wrath uh, protection card that is not not commonly seen. No, not uh, at all. It, it definitely you know uh, definitely a metagame call. Obviously, you know if you're going into a heavy supreme <laughs> verdict, the you know damnation sort of format, maybe not the best. He's uh, playing actual wrath of God. The sideboard too, though. <laughs> 
Well, everyone's got to be able to sometimes deal with, you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure you got to be able to deal with any of the, the um, uh, hollow and draws. I think that's probably. Yeah, I that you know, that's that's 100 percent true. Um, I mean, he has rest in pieces, too. And Stony Silences and all the good white sideboard cards you'd expect. But yeah, I mean, like it, when, when we take a look at, at, at his sideboard, it's like he he probably had the advantage of like uh, having three stony silences if you played against you know the Mad ironworks ass. yeah if you played against the ironworks <laughs> uh, and rest of peace as well so um i i do like these these sort of taxes lists i i do think that uh, comparatively to like what else you can play in the format sometimes they end up feeling a little bit short uh in my opinion uh which is yeah, you take it or leave it obviously um but uh but other than that, um, I uh, I think this is a pretty cool thing that you can do if you want to play like a a green white little kid deck um, with just a just a hint of green. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he's not playing um, Gaddock Teague though. That that feels like a card that you could uh, that you could really take advantage of. But I guess if you're also wanting, I guess, but you're not. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree. Get, could be price. Like it could be. <laughs> could I don't be think price. so. You're playing four Horizon Canopies and four Either Wilds, but I think Gatitude is now obviously more than, than Horizon Canopy at this point in time. Yeah. Uh, you have only you only have so many slots, man. You got to play the Mark of Asylum too. So I guess that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, that, that, you know that's kind of how the the top eight shaped out. I, w- I was pretty surprised. I was pretty genuinely surprised to uh, to see humans win though. I, I feel like the deck is still good, but it, it definitely has um, taken a little bit of a of a hit in the meta game uh, due to um, uh, due to the the unbannings. Uh, it, it certainly did benefit from them uh, for 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 that. So, um, but I, you know, it's a deck that I like. It's a deck that I'm I'm building right now. So. Uh, I'm glad to see that it it, it do well, but um, it, with a diverse top eight like that, you know, really anything is is uh, is viable uh, within the format still, and that's good. You know, uh, we, we see that nothing is really warping the the format or anything like that, and um, you know, when we take a look um, down through the ninth through thirty two lists, um, we definitely still see a lot of diversity. We still think we see the things like blue moon, blue white control. Uh, Affinity, Storm, uh, Black Red Hollow One, Dredge, Martyr Pyromancer, Ponza, um, Elves uh, is showing up here, uh, Madcap Moon, uh, Titan Shift, Taking Turns, uh, but yeah, so s- still a lot of still a lot of stuff. Uh, Take pretty much anything. Yeah, I mean, um, but I- I'm glad. I'm glad that that you know, modern, you know, kind of lives up to what Wizards thought that it was that it truly was a, a format that had caught up in power level to jace that had caught in power level to bloodbraid elf and was able to while may, may, maybe early on it, it did seem like bloodbraid elf might have been uh, may, maybe a bit too powerful a lot of a lot of jun showing up and especially with the um the, the mocks um finals um, we definitely saw um, a lot of players t- turn to uh, turn Jun. I-, I think that maybe p- p- had people a little bit worried, but uh, I-, I feel like the format has sort of uh, fixed fixed itself or, or, or was never broken. was was just fine, and um, you know really showed how how strong a lot of these archetypes truly are. I, I want to say it's pretty surprising that so the number one overall played deck was Burn, I believe, based on the metagame projection, and Burn yeah. didn't top thirty two. Yeah. I mean, and uh no death shadow again um yeah <laughs> i feel like all the burned and all the death shadow kind of just fought against each other and like it's, it's ended up true. just taking each other out but uh um i i i'm not i'm not surprised that that burn was like the 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 most you know cover like the most x represented in day two and we don't see it one top 32 um burn is is a deck that is very popular because it's still very it has the sweet spot uh, the sweet spot of being very powerful and very inexpensive comparatively right, right. to to most other decks especially with you know some of the printings that we just had in uh, masters 25 um you know the, the deck still like stays consistently low and um so it's not surprising to see it be very very popular um and for it to not top 32 like that the for you know that that could just be uh the the case of that deck you know um if you just go up against a, a lot of not great matchups then 
uh, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah, that's fair. And we don't necessarily know the records either of, you know, the, 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 the players that converted necessarily. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, we, uh, we'll, we'll definitely, um, have to see where it goes, but you know, it, it, it all in all, uh, you know, burn is, uh, still a perfectly, perfectly, perfectly fine, um, a, a, a call for, for any large. Oh, no, it certainly is. I just think it's interesting to see it not even crack the top 32. Yeah. I, I guess like playing bird, I don't find that necessarily exciting, uh, necessarily surprising. I should say, uh, I just feel like, yeah, that, that makes sense. Like just a lot of people play burn and it, it's just like good. Don't worry. Goblins is coming. <laughs> yeah, goblins. My, my uh, loyal legion just came in the mail this week. <laughs> Dominaria. will goblins we'll, are coming. We'll, we'll bring the hurt, bring the pain. <laughs> um, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think there was necessarily anything too like super exciting that, that kind of broke out from uh, uh, from the, this tournament, other than you know the the uh, Ironworks combo. Um, that, that that was a it was a good showing for that list, but everything else is pretty nominal. Um, uh, the if anyone's interested in the taking turns list, it was uh, blue white, not mono blue, and not we're not playing any. <laughs> um, we're not playing any as for told. That's what I was looking for. We're not playing any as for told. Ah, so. gotcha, gotcha. But yeah, uh, and that was that, you know, that was GP Phoenix. We see the most played uh, card in the top thirty-two, Lightning Bolt, followed by Noble Hierarch. So <laughs> the, the the eternal struggle, as as it were. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, <sighs> but anything else from GP Phoenix? Did you watch any of the, uh, any of the coverage at all? No, I, I did not have time to, unfortunately. Uh, I watched a little bit of it, uh, live and a little bit of, uh, of it on the restreams. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty good. No, nothing, nothing too, uh, uh, groundbreaker exciting other than the, of course, go back and, and watch the clips of the bot <laughs> kill, killing the, uh, the opponent. I'm uh, glad, yeah, I'm glad it, that Jund has, you know, come back to and regained strength so that we can always get more of those. Uh, it's definitely in the, uh, the top moments in the weekend. So oh. you can, they have the clip already pulled out for you. You can take yeah. a look. No. Um, that's going to be everything for uh, competitive. So before we go into the wrap up, definitely want to give a shout out to BCW supplies. Uh, you can check them out at bcwsupplies.com or find them on Facebook. Uh, do a search for, of course, BCW supplies and give them a like. So you can, uh, you know, keep in touch with uh, all the new awesome products that they are uh, coming out with. So uh, what do we have over the weekend? We have Star City Games Cincinnati, which is going to be team constructed and GP Kyoto, which is also going to be team constructed. Now I, I know that, I know that Dave ha- has kind of voiced his concerns about there just being too many team events. Um, and like this, this weekend might be a highlight of that because we have two, like two team events. I don't, I don't know why it matters because they're just going to show matches. So the viewer isn't going to see team events and people love them. They're, they're going to be huge events. So I, I, I yeah, I don't I, know. I, 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 I wish I was playing on either one of these events I, and I, I don't care. I feel like, I had to do that because, you know, Dave's not here, and I feel like he would have brought it up. You no, know, I think you ruined the show. <laughs> you brought up Dave. <laughs> you brought up Dave. <laughs> wow. Sick burn. We'll see if we'll, – we won't say anything. If Dave if Dave truly makes it through this whole episode that he yeah. wasn't on, he won't get insulted yeah, until the very we, end. If we get some uh, expletives towards us, then we'll know that Dave <laughs> truly did listen. Um, yeah, I, I think it's weird that uh, uh, neither of us are going to uh, Cincinnati. But. Yeah, I, I wish. There, there's a chance um, – like, I mean, Sunday, I guess I could try to go. But. Yeah, but – so I guess this is a thing that kind of happened that we didn't really get addressed in the community, but um, the classics they they changed their price payout recently. I thought we did talk about that. Did we? I thought because Dave was uh, received one of those poor price, <laughs> one of those more uh, smaller price payouts. Yeah, which definitely like, I mean, obviously going to a classic, especially like if you're going to the Columbus Classic. Uh, and obviously it's the modern classic that, that will be probably attended by, by you. Then you're going to a giant classic, a 400 person classic where you have to top 32 and get $60 in credit. So like profit 20 space bucks. (laughs) So while I, don't get me wrong. Like you would have to convince me very hard to like that be the thing that, I go do uh, on Sunday, but um, it definitely uh, is some, some food for thought at the yeah, very, at the yeah, very that's least, for sure. But also, I still want to go because I'm a sucker. I guess 
Um, but we'll see. M- maybe. Maybe there might be a surprise showing of uh, some Matt Urin's set members <laughs> on Sunday. I wouldn't hold your breath, though. Yeah. Don't do that. It's dangerous anyways. Yeah, and, and plus that Sunday, and it's Tuesday right now, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't make it. Um, but that's everything that's happening over the weekend, and uh, that's everything for the show. So, of course, you can always uh, reach out to us, give us some uh, feedback, or contact us. Uh, we have a Twitter account. It's your end step. When you add us, it's at your end step. We also have a Facebook account. Uh, you can do a quick search for at your end step on Facebook.com. And um, we have an email address at your at Facebook.com. So uh, at your at gmail.com. That's a great um, a second there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you uh, uh, want to reach out to us through that method, you certainly can. Uh, if you're listening to us via iTunes, feel free to leave us a review or a rating. It really helps with visibility and getting new listeners to the show. And if you downloaded us through MTG Cast, be sure to check out some of the awesome shows they have on there. Uh, and not just us, you know, expand your horizons. There's a lot of good podcasts out there. We might be the best, but there are also a lot of other good ones. Uh, I think I said last week, but I'll reiterate again. Uh, check out the Vorthos podcast. Yes, really I, enjoyed I that. listened to that, and I did enjoy it as well. Yes. It's it's very good. It's very interesting to like hear about all that stuff that you know, kind of went on. And it's uh, it's a bit wild, uh, for for sure, as well. Some of the, uh, some of the older storylines. And uh, throughout the, the through line with that, so far as that Urza... Not a very good person. Oh, Urza was a monster. Yeah, not, yeah. not very yeah. good. Urza was into like eugenics... And also just treated every being he came across like a tool. Yeah. So, yeah, Teferi gets a lot of heat for being a jerk, but it's probably because he had to deal with Urza for so long. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, but, yeah, definitely, I would say give them a, a, a quick listen to if you haven't yet. Also, we have a Patreon, so if you want to, uh, you know, contribute monetarily to the, the show, we would uh, certainly appreciate it. We, uh, you know, our, our patrons do uh, do help us keep the lights on here at the uh, the old podcast, so uh, we definitely appreciate it. And thank every one of you that, that choose to uh, give the show for every episode. We appreciate it. Uh, also, I'll, I'll throw one more time, the second episode of my baseball podcast yeah. came out this week. That, the Church of Baseball. The Church of Baseball that Morgan is, is so uh, graciously... Um, you know, pro- you know, I say sound producing and, and sort of setting up for us. Uh, he helped retool the intro if you this week, which sounds real nice. Oh, good. So, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, I uh, I worked real hard on, on that intro, so not, not very hard. But <laughs> I think it's like one of those Rice Krispie Treats commercials, right? Where you just like threw flour all over your face and you're just like ah, I've been slaving over this hot <laughs> this hot soundboard all day. <laughs> this hot intro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, again, if you if you like baseball at all, um, I, we're enjoying doing it, and you know you can you can get in on the ground floor episode yeah. two was just just this week. Right now, it's 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 uh you know uh, every two weeks, but you know once once baseball season sort of uh, ca- you know, kicks off, we might be seeing you know more episodes. But uh, it really is kind of a play by ear sort of situation. But at least one every two weeks for yeah. now. But uh, that's going to be everything for us this week. We will catch you next time. Maybe Dave will be back. I don't know. Uh, no, he, he will be back. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but thank you for listening. You have a great one. Bye.